Okay, today's question is from Nira in Illinois. Nira writes in, Hi, Brian. Good news. I had an awesome first interview with a sports company I really want to work for. Yeah. I used so much of your advice, and it really guided me through the process and gave me confidence. I researched. I reviewed my skills and accomplishments. I came up with stories that allowed me to share and exemplify my soft skills. Basically, I channeled you, and it worked. I got asked back for a second interview. So with that in mind, what should I do now? Is it a totally different experience on the second interview? Nira, great, great question. I love it when I get asked things that we haven't really delved into before. How different is the second interview versus the first interview? How much does it overlap with what you've already prepared for? Let's get into it. Number one, frame your mind around this first, okay? If you were competing with, let's say, 25 people before, now it's like 10. And that's a good thing. You have to think of it as a funnel, right? So I'm diagramming now what a funnel looks like on our YouTube channel, which I hope you're all subscribed to. If not, you should. My bosses like it when you subscribe. When they see that new subscriber number tick up, they get happy. So, so do I. So anyway, I'm, I'm diagramming a funnel, right? Okay, so we all know what a funnel is. If you imagine the top level is 500 people applied for this job, and then it goes down to 50 that got initial callbacks based on their resume and skills, maybe a phone interview or whatever. And then it goes down to 25 that got an actual first you know, video interview. And then it goes down to 10 that get the second interview. And then it goes down to like five and then one. You're pretty far along in the process. Get it in your head that you've been doing things right to this point. You have worked your way down the funnel. The competition is less. So get that in your head that you are doing things well. I think it's a frame of mind thing that you just need to remind yourself of. Like, don't let panic take over because the pressure is getting higher. Think to yourself, okay, I'm doing well. The competition is falling off and I'm still here. Let that give you some confidence and build you up a little bit. Number two, let's get into the process a little bit. You will meet in this process, in this part of the process, the second interview with more decision makers. There's going to be different people. There's going to be a cross section of the business. Let me explain to you how this works. A lot of times on a second interview, your first interview may have been with an HR rep. Maybe your first phone interview especially was with an HR rep and they have a set list of questions they're gonna ask you. Then maybe you had a conversation with the hiring manager, the direct person that you'll be uh, interview working for, right? So maybe your first video interview was with them. You got through that barrier, now they broaden. For the second interview, they're bringing in more people. You might talk with other department heads. You might talk with somebody above your hiring manager. You're going to have to understand, because they'll probably give you an agenda beforehand. They'll probably tell you, you're going to be meeting with these people at these times or whatever. You're going to have more to research, because you're going to have to understand them and their background a little bit. If you're meeting with somebody that's a CFO, or somebody that's in finance, or somebody that's in HR, or somebody that's in marketing or operations, you want to be ready to handle those things. Most organizations work in cross-functional ways when they hire. At the second interview phase, when it's down to the top 10, they involve more people in the decision-making process. You have to be ready to talk to those people where they are. So if you're talking to the person that's involved in finance, understand and frame your mind that that conversation may be different than talking to somebody in marketing. There might be different types of questions they ask that relate to their world. So think about that as you strategize and go into this process. The questions may be similar, but different in that they are they are segmented to what this person's influence may be and where they sit in the organization. Put yourself in their point of view thinking, okay, if I was in their position and I was the director of this department over here, but I also knew I was helping to just make a decision over here, what would I want to know, right? Think of your research in that regard and go look at those people, understand their background a little bit, really get a vibe for what those people are and what they what they what they bring to the table, because they have a unique skill set and knowledge that they'll bring to the conversation that might be different than any you've had to this point. Point number three, lean into what was worked in the earlier interviews. You got to this point for a reason, right? Let's say you interviewed with your hiring manager and it's the person you might directly report to. The things you said worked. The points you made Think about that. Replay it in your head. Think about the body language that you got back from them. Think about the, the lean-ins that you got or the nodding of the heads. Those were subjects that they really liked. Lean into that stuff. You hit their culture. You hit their needs. You hit their wants or your skill sets or whatever. The, the other people you talk to as part of this process are probably going to want to hear those same kind of things. 
Don't think of it like you're repeating things like, oh, I already said that. Assume they don't know anything about you. R- bring back the hits. If you hit, said some things during your first interview and you know that you hit the mark really well, be ready to bring it back. Okay. Don't think that they all watched the video co- recording of your first interview. They probably didn't. Right. It may not even exist at some organizations. Some organizations record other co- organizations. Don't some make it a requirement for them to watch it beforehand. Others don't just know if you hit the mark with something before, bring it back. Point number four, expect some repeats. Okay. So I am a hiring manager, but I am not the hiring manager for this role. When I get looped into a uh, interview process in the second round, I really want to meet and know this person. But maybe I haven't spent a ton of my time coming up with super specific questions for this role. I may have a format that I follow. I may have a format provided to me by LinkedIn, by HR. I may have certain things that are given to me by the hiring manager they want to have asked. Don't be surprised if you're going to hear a lot of the same questions again. New people, same questions from a different voice. They want to hear your answer at that moment. Like they want to hear what you have to say in these things. They may have been told that, oh yeah, she's this and she's that, or he's this and he's that. They kind of want to hear it for themselves. So don't be surprised if you get some of the same questions and don't be caught off guard by that. That is a normal, normal process. Bring it the way you did in the interview the first time, add a little bit more into it that may help with this specific person and their role and relate it to them and their position. You'll be in a good spot. Number five, what did you learn? Go back. What did you learn in your first interview about them? So when you asked follow-up questions, because I know all of you are smart enough to ask follow-up questions after your interview is complete, and they say to me, hey, do you have any questions for me? I know you all had, 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 had good follow-up questions to ask. What did you learn? When you answered some of their questions and they responded with positive body language or some sort of a, a, you know, some sort of a moment, what did you learn from that? You have to take this as an active participant. In that first phase, when you were going through the interview process, as soon as you finish, you should be taking notes. Assume you're gonna get a second interview. Write down some notes on what worked, what didn't, what, how they answered certain follow-up questions. You may know their entire strategy now because of the smart questions that you asked. You may know their company missions, their goals, their future plans better now. Weave those into the conversation that you talk to with the next layer of people in your second interview. If you've learned that their biggest competition is company X, bring up ways you think you can make their role better than company X and what they're doing, how you might approach things differently. If you talk to the CFO or somebody in finance, and you're talking about how you see revenue streams that they haven't uh, taken, that their competition hasn't taken on, and it aligns with the strategy maybe your hiring manager's already talked about in your first interview, you are dialed in. You are going to resonate with them. So take everything you've learned and put it to work. It's not always about new research for a second interview. It's about applying what you've learned already and making that take action what you've learned about their culture, what you've learned about their mission, their strategy, their goals, their competition. Put those things to work, good stuff. Number six, expect the questions to be a little bit different and be more aligned with how you will impact their business if you are hired. So it's more visualizing you, a lot of the questions are more visualizing you if you were part of this role rather than just awareness about who you are. Here's what I mean. Instead of getting a question like, tell me about a time, a a general question, tell me about a time you had to overcome an objection with a, with an angry client. You know, that's a general question. That's something you might've given asked in the first round and you probably gave a great answer, but now it'll be more like, what do you expect to accomplish in the first three months on the job? What do you think makes you a good fit for this role? It's more focused on you aligning with them. It's more focused on how you're going to fit versus your general skills or your general approach. It's going to get more specific about how you fit. So be prepared for that conversation. They want to see your vision for yourself. They want to see how you fit. They want to hear how aggressive you are. In my view, better to come strong here, like really strong. I do. Show enthusiasm. Be confident, right? You can be a change agent at this organization. You will make a difference. I fit because this, 
I want to achieve these things. This is what I see. It aligns with your strategy. It aligns with where you want to go. I'm going to, I'm going to, you're going to have a go-to-market video strategy or you're going to be able to do, and we're going to do this and I'm going to aim for that. Have an aggressive thought process and plan for yourself and don't be afraid to lay it out there. It may not align with exactly what they want to do. That's okay. Don't overthink it. If you're aggressive and assertive and you give them an idea that you're competitive and want to get after it, they're going to appreciate it, even if they need to tweak the strategy some and put you on a slightly different path. That's okay. Tweaking is easy. You can't teach somebody enthusiasm. You can't teach somebody confidence. You can't teach somebody to have that go after it mentality. So bring that and show that you've got it. Number seven, expect salary to come up. They're going to say something to you and they're going to put it in your corner. What's your expected salary? How much do you expect to make? My suggestion to you always is to be well-researched in this regard. There are websites out there you can use to research. There's ways you can understand salary requirements. There's ways you can understand what you deserve in this role. Be at that number. Be at that range. Don't give it an exact. You can give an exact number. I should. I should take that back. If you give an exact and, and specific number, um, I think that's actually a better approach. If you said something like, you know, uh, eighty-seven thousand uh, dollars. Here's why. Give it some background. I did the research here. Uh, you know, this is the marketplace, and have your data with you. If you say something like a very exacting number, that gives a vibe off that you've done research. You're not just throwing out like, I don't know, between 60 and $80,000. Well, they're going to give you 60, <laughs> you know, like have a specific number, have it be well-researched, throw something out there that you feel comfortable accepting. Expect there to be a little bit of a conversation and negotiation. Don't be too crazy aggressive at the start and um, be just ready for that conversation because in this phase, you're getting closer to them making a decision. Those kind of data points are going to come up. Number eight, final one have a lot, a lot of questions prepared. Why is this important? You will likely be meeting with five to seven people, maybe more. Different people at your level, if you were hired, mid-level managers, senior executives. Every single one of them is gonna say, what questions do you have for me? You're gonna go for 45 minutes with them and then you're gonna have, they're gonna say, what questions do you have for me? Spend some time now writing up questions. Lots of different questions. Come with research, come with ideas, put them all together, have some questions that fit that specific person, have them written on notes. The greatest advantage of, and I'm not trying to make light of the pandemic, but the greatest advantage of right now is that so much is happening on video rather than face-to-face. -face. And what that means is you can stick a bunch of sticky notes all around your screen, all around your monitors, all around you with the questions you want to ask. You don't have to recall them all in that moment when you're feeling a little bit stressed or agitated. Put notes all around you. You're on a video interview, they won't be able to see them, right? Just put the notes all around you. Be ready with lots and lots of questions. Don't just keep repeating the same one. Have it focus on their strategy. Have it focus on how you fit. Have it focus on where you're going. There's tons of podcasts I've done already about questions you should ask as follow-ups during an interview, right? But at the second interview, you're going to be meeting with more people. It's not about this one person that I have to have four or five follow-ups for. This is going to be about five or seven people that I'm meeting with that day. And they're all going to ask me follow-up if I have any follow-up questions. Be prepared with lots of stuff because you want to engage back with them and continue to learn. Remember, in this process, you're trying to figure out if you like work, the idea of working there too. It's, it's a two-way sharing of information. It's not just, do they like me? It's, do I like them? So make sure your questions are probing and get you there. Now, Nira, if you do these kind of things to prepare you, just like you did for round one, you did a whole bunch of steps to prepare you and it went really well. If you do these things, trust me, it's going to go really well for you. You're going to find yourself in that funnel again when it goes from 10 down to like two. And then you're going to be meeting with like the CEO, you head to head with one other person. Not head to head. You're not going to actually like be battling it out in the room, but it's going to be you and one other choice they have to make. And hey, then it's up to you to push that over the finish line. But if you do these things, you're going to be in a really good position. So I hope that helps you, Nira. 